all right welcome back to another video it's march the 30th today so dad went ahead cleaned the heifer barn this morning or this afternoon um i'm topping bales now so i got two load up in the straw chopper it's a really tight fit mentioned it before um nine out of ten times two bales in this chopper works as it should tenth time it doesn't and then i'm out the extra amount of time of putting two bales in so yeah um she over here got her 7420 hoods up um yeah i've talked about it already but we had a battery charger and that battery charger quit it's pretty well brand new battery charger has a one year exchange warranty at canadian tire a couple things we didn't quite like about it um so we're exchanging it for a better one i think we're going to a booster this time or maybe a charger again i don't know so yeah we got a new battery for this tractor it's coming it's currently in a shipping container on a boat on its way over here so yeah that's why that's like that but let's get to chopping There you go, all done bedding down at top three bales. I bedded up these back pens here as well. Um, yeah, it's about time to clean out. Hi, it's about time to clean out this bed pack back here again, although it looks a little higher than it is because when I chop straw in there, it gets all fluffed down within a couple days. So, yeah. There you go, I'll bed it up again. I'm keeping this pen inside the barn for now, not let them go outside. Because I want to go ahead and scoop up some more manure off the pad and we can pull the spreader for it again. Um, gotta push up hay and feed bales in here. The other thing I've been working on, we run two grain buggies in this heifer barn. This orange one here and this white one. This white one got a flat tire. Went ahead and bought a new one. This tire here is filled with foam. It'll never go flat. Uh, that's what we were trying to go for for this one, but I guess they didn't have them. Came with these bushings. Um, they don't fit on the shaft. These were the old bushings in the tire, or wheel bearings, whatever. I guess they are ball bearings, but this C, they don't turn freely anymore, and See all the play in there. It's not gonna push nice. So I went out today and bought two new ones. So we'll be all set up. So I got this bearing put in. I went ahead and I was trying to put the other one in the other side and it fell apart. I had my center punch that was going along the outside. I don't know if it was a bad bearing or if I nicked it, but I wouldn't think so. You can see this one's fine, but it fell apart. That sucks. They're just cheap bearings anyway, and I guess they aren't that well made. Or, yeah. So I wouldn't imagine that it would have fallen apart for me hitting that. They weren't that hard to get in, so shouldn't have. Anyway. Could get the old bearing back together, but it's missing too many... The little uh, balls inside the ball bearing. So, just gonna put the old one back in. Get it in there straight. There you have it. New bearings in. Yeah, it's got play, but it's better to have one in there than none or whatever. Gets to a point where you just get sick of dealing with this and they don't go very fast it might be a little harder to push might not be perfect but yeah this time we get this buggy rolling again because 
Otherwise, it's going to be another couple days before I go out and get a new one and whatever. So, yeah. Um, Dad went to town. It was too late to get him to get, or it was too late for me to tell him to get one of those bushings. I knew he'd already be on the way home. Bearings. So, our old one was a battery charger, like I mentioned. It's a battery booster. Um, we went a little bit all the way out this time. We went ahead and bought one of these NoCo Boost Pros. Heard good things about them. Watched good things about them. Uh, you can see here, 9 liter gas with 7 liter diesel. Should be perfect. Cab track is a 6.8 liter. So, yeah. Gonna go ahead. I gotta clean off this freezer slash workbench again. But I'll take it out of the box and show you. There it is. Pretty slick. Um, not that I need it, but it even has a light. Um, whole pile of settings. I don't know. Fancier than I need for that, but... Yeah, power button, all that. Sat in the top like a shoebox. Pretty cool. Got a cool little bag for it. I presume there's some kind of charger in here. And whatnot to charge it up. And the guide, gotta read that. Cool. Looks like it charges through um, this cord here, which is USB, or it has a car charger, like you can plug it into a car. A bag for it, that's what was in the bag. Um, it appears to have already a pretty good charge coming with it. Not in the green, but we're going to see if we can get that tractor boosted with the amount of battery it has now. Pretty cool. Alright, it's raining out. 11.1 volts. Hit the power button. You can see it's going up. Cool. And it's running. I didn't even have to charge it. 14.8 volts. Perfect. Way better than the old one we had. Alright, spreading a load of manure. Filled up the spreader the rest of the way from manure under the manure elevator. This morning there wasn't enough room in the spreader from all the manure from the dairy barn. So this load is half heifer barn manure and half dairy manure or dairy barn manure. So, yeah. Getting it spread out on this sod ground. This field's getting pretty full. Dad's up there. Bale. It's easier to see the white bale moving away in the distance. He's feeding bale it. Spreading a load of manure. It's not raining that much. But just a little bit. Um, yeah, so between the cost of the John Deere battery and this aftermarket battery, there's about the same cost as that battery booster battery jump pack we bought in there um so yeah uh, that other battery should be coming soon so we'll get there at some point but it is what it is um at least we get something for the price difference like could have just bought a John Deere battery and had it sooner, but would have spent more money. Versus now, spend less money, but we get something in turn. So, yeah. Cool little battery booster. Well, not exactly little, but cool battery booster. So, get us through next week or so till we get that other battery. Yeah, this morning I went ahead, it's the shaft off that wagon, the PTO shaft. It was um, broken, snapped last fall. Took that down to Marsh Brothers. It's gonna get fixed. So it's all twisted. Uh, just the inner tube, the outer plating's all fine. Um, the other thing I brought down there Took a furrow off the plow, whole furrow. Um, we're going, 
so we need all new wear plates on the furrow. The furrow is still good, but all the rest of the stuff. Um, I tried figuring out how to measure the furrow this morning because for our international 720 plow, they they have either 14, 16, or 18 inch bottoms. I couldn't figure it out what size it was trying to measure it. Um, there's some stuff on the internet that talked about it a bit but I couldn't figure it out people had different opinions on how to measure it so I didn't know how so I just took it off brought it to them and they're gonna measure everything up and tell me what size it is and what it'll cost you can see it's that last fur on the plow there I zoomed in on the wrong one but that's the fur I took off so yeah, they have it down there to measure up what it needs. Um, pretty well everything but the furrow needs to be done. It's a four bottom, 720. It's a nice plow. We don't do a lot of plowing anymore. I only got 20 acres this year, hay ground. Anyway, I'm going to hop out of the cab tractor and help Dad with that bale that we're putting on the cart. Filling up buggies. Got a robot pellet here. Our top dress that we just top dress to the cows. And this is heifer feed. There you go, buggies full. All the savings that I had stacked up fell over. I'll stack those again. So yeah, the robot pellet comes out of that bin. And then heifer feed comes out of this big bin. Um, this big bin here is overkill for what we use it for now. Um, when mom and dad put it up, what's the year? It's etched in the concrete. 2006. Yeah. Um, I believe it was a used bin back in 2006. It's corrugated. It's not the best. We like the smooth wall bins better. It likes to bridge on those, um, but it's not bad. So that's the big bin, um, molasses tank for the cows. Got filled up again this week. Robot pellet bin, and then shown them before. We have this bin here. This is for the milk cows. It's a straight auger. It's really fast. That's why we put milk cow feed in here. It's not the biggest bin, but it's faster feeding out of this one than that big metal one over there. We don't use this grain bin here anymore. Um, last year they used that, it was 1992. Um, yeah, my mom and my grandfather used to fill that. They used to grind corn out of there. And after my grandfather had a heart attack in 1992, my sister was born, they both decided it's too much work. So then I believe my grandfather went to buying more feed from feed mills as opposed to that. We also filled the granary in the barn back then. But yeah, so it's been, it hasn't been used for a number of years. Let's keep it around just in case. It doesn't look bad in there. If I can get the top one open. Like everything's still here. It's starting to rust a bit, I guess, but yeah. That's that. One buggy empty in the heifer barn, and there's a full one down there. Perfect. Well, I'll bring this one to the barn, fill it up. If it doesn't even make it here for tomorrow morning, it's all right, because we've got a second one. That's what I like about having two buggies. All right, so in editing this video, I realized I forgot to film an outro. So it's a bunch of days later. I'm going to thank you for watching that video. Uh, thanks for watching to the end. So I'll figure I better film an intro sometime. I realized two days ago when I watched it through, didn't film one. 
you know, thanks for watching. God bless.